the pain is there because we are expecting pleasure so when there is pain it does not mean that we don't do anything acceptance is not inactivity and that is another delusion you see thanks for reminding me that uh, pain means that you go and do something about the pain and then back to acceptance it will heal if it is chronic pain then you know that the body is given up the you know, body is the disease isn't it so acceptance that the body is gone now cannot be maintained how many people do that no they resist just like i am saying more resistance means longer pain bigger pain so the pain is not good but uh, and that is resistance is, may, makes it worse and there was a thought in my mind you see i remembered a question from somewhere if you think the body is not real the world is not real why are you protecting it <laughs> why why you get afraid when uh, there is some dangerous work to be done when you want to jump from one higher place to ground or and i take up some heavy electrical work wiring and all why are you why do you take so many precautions and uh, i really don't have any answer to that because it is not the i it is the it is our programming that is doing it millions of years of programming survival is doing it so how can i take credit for this this organism is made like this its job is to survive so what is wrong there it can happen whether, whether it is real or unreal see what is happening has nothing to do with reality and reality because that is another problem in the mind nothing is real nothing is unreal it is that which you define to be real using your own criteria when we say unreal in advait it simply means it's not going to last that's all it means <laughs> it is very simple yet very very beautiful the most accurate definition of reality i've never found anything else better than this so when i say unreal it me always uses this criteria that it's impermanent that's why it is unreal that which stays is permanent is real this is the criteria that we are using and everybody knows why we use this criteria the logic behind it it is the ultimate that is one reason everything else will be inferior to this criteria so everything that is changing is not there actually otherwise it wouldn't change it will remain the base the substratum is never changing so that's why we say that it exists other thing appear and disappear on it so uh, reality is relative isn't it more real and re- less real that's all there is these people ask this question so why are you so obsessed about security of the body and so on and uh, in other words they are saying why don't you die and uh, i i had no answer actually but uh, one day i thought about this thing and recently and they, an answer appeared which is that um, we are not afraid of injury or um, something bad happening to the body or the mind because it will cause death that is not the real fear the real fear is that i'll need to live with this messy situation for the rest of my life if i am not careful if the body breaks gets injured then even if it is unreal <laughs> it is going to it's going to be a very low quality of life this that's why the intelligence says that this is better to avoid this thing if there is death if you say just smelling something will cause death then no problem <laughs> no problem because i won't be there to uh, suffer the consequences there won't be anybody to suffer it and that's why we take precaution when we talk to people because a little bit of insult is going to stay with you forever it does not matter from whether it's coming from a stranger or from your own loved one in fact the stranger you will forget pretty quickly but uh, the ones who are closer to you if they say something bad then it remains forever so why, that's why we are very careful we take the same precaution just like we take precaution well doing something dangerous so we don't want to live with it forever like for the rest of the life and that's why we avoid these things given this life whether it is real or unreal you don't want that experience 
This is the tendency of the mind. Stays away from the negative. Any kind of harm. This is the tendency. This is also perfect. I don't see any problems here. I don't know why people see problems like this when there are none. What is wrong if the mind behaves in a specific way in Maya? What is wrong in that? <laughs> Where is the logic failing here? It does so and that's the end of argument, isn't it? So getting rid of pain is easy, isn't it? Very easy. The problem is we don't want to live with that. That is the only problem. It is not, It has nothing to do with being real or unreal. Let us say you are watching a um, um, movie, a very boring movie. Nothing is happening or the same things are being repeated. That's what every movie is, you know, repetition of the same story in a slightly different way. It's a, it's a garbage story and a garbage acting and all the dialogues are garbage. You have heard it many times. Do you want to watch that whole movie? No, you simply close it, start something else. So, that, this is how, it does not mean that uh, the movie is uh, real. It simply means you don't want that experience. You don't have that preference. <laughs> That's why we stay, we, we don't want the pain. Do we want the pleasure? The ple pleasure is absence of pain. It's nothing more than that. So, if you get more and more pleasure, you will see that it becomes pain. <laughs> It is, um, if there is absence of pain, the body is fit. It is happy. It's very, very happy. And that's why when people ask, you know, how to be healthy, what kind of yoga position, <laughs> what kind of breathing for health, blood pressure. I said, what? These things were not invented to keep people healthy. The yogic exercises and all, they are, they have spiritual reason. So, and to be healthy, it's only one thing. Don't break your body. It knows how to remain healthy. It knows how to avoid pain. Just listen to the body. It is doing exactly that which is needed. Now people start breaking the body and the reason is they want pleasure. That's all. Why people smoke? There is no pleasure actually in smoking. There is this social component in smoking. I don't know what it is. It's kind of messy psychology somewhere that they want to, um, the peer pressure, they want to conform to whatever others are doing. If the big man in your school, the handsome person is smoking, then you are under pressure to do the same. And then the nicotine will take over. It becomes an addiction. So I don't know what causes women to smoke. and they, I don't think there is any pressure on them. But uh, nicotine has this uh, property of um, relaxing the mind. Just like you said, chemicals. <laughs> the mind can be controlled very easily by chemicals. It's so easy. Probably that's why people get addicted to it. But I don't think uh, anything is can be controlled like this. It has uh, consequences always. Always there are consequences. So people break their bodies, people get into the addictions and um, unhealthy lifestyles for pleasure. And sometimes for very, very stupid reasons. So people drive uh, like high speed, crowded on a crowded road because adrenaline, they are addicted to that. Body is producing adrenaline, so they get addicted to that. And then the adrenaline has consequences. It, it will break your body. It is a stressful experience. So, just like the mental states will produce chemicals, the chemicals will produce mental states. Why is that? It's all mind, you see. The body is not different from mind. It's just another layer of the mind. It's not my body. The I is, it does not own these things. It is having ex an experience. It is borrowed experience, borrow, borrowed from the universal mind. Probably not even the universal mind, the small part of the universal mind which I usually call the greater mind, is borrowed from there. So, and should I break it? Should I not take care of it? Because it's all Maya, <laughs> it's not mine. And that is another stupidity. Should I go for it again and again and again? No, that is also not necessary. So that's why I say there is, I've tried to find a reason. There is always a reason somewhere. And it will be completely fake reason, but that's not going to make any difference. 
just like I said. The question is not the reality or unreality. The question is that we are playing here. That's all. How nicely you want to play. That's all there is. Make your experience a good experience. That's all. Isn't it? That's what the Buddha is saying. Gautam Buddha said, get rid of the suffering. Everything else is cool. No need to mess with anything else. This ordinary life is the greatest joy. <laughs> Why are kings so miserable? Why do they kill people in thousands? Why do they make the poor farmers pay taxes? No, you should not assume that there are no kings. They are there, only only the titles have changed. Why is, why is their life so miserable? Because ordinary is not enough. There is a delusion in the mind. There is a mental disease there. that I need to control everything. I need all the land. I need all the people to lick my feet. And this is a mental disease, mental sickness. Actually, this is a big subject. You, you will say, okay, then uh, if there is no king there, who will protect me? Because there will be some other king who will who will attack you and uh, do the uh, do exactly the same thing, probably worse. This is human nature, you see. There cannot be any solution for this. The only solution is to rise above human. Uh, and for that you need to start by realizing that we are not human. We are essentially emptiness who has taken the form of human. Now, if you don't like the experience, don't try to change the experience. Just change the channel. You cannot change the... You cannot, you know, um, go to the TV studio, wherever it is, and ask them to stop. Stop doing or put the other program or make this actor behave in this way. I don't want this actor to say these lines. I don't want any, any kings in your play. It will be a big stupidity to, <laughs> to try to change the whole studio and... Um, and their programs and setups and all. And nobody's going to like it, believe me or not. They don't like it. Their plays, millions of people, they like it. They like their play, boring play. So what you do, you don't change it. You change the channel. Watch something else. That's what the yogi is doing. That's why we recommend getting rid of the human life. Because as long as it is there, it will trouble you. Why not explore something else? And as long as you are exploring, it is going to trouble you. <laughs> there will be better life. There will be heavenly experiences. There will be millions of years of body-free, birth-free, death-free lives. Who cares? It becomes boring after a while. And that's why dissolution of the mind is recommended. Any way that is going to happen. So some people may say, okay, then you know, cut to the chase. Let's go to the dissolution directly. And such people are seekers. Now, from the from this point of view, you know, you are at the ground floor because we are all humans. We are all at the ground floor. <laughs> it looks meaningless. What do you mean dissolution? What do you mean nirvan? This is something amazing. The word is very amazing. It means uh, turning off of the lamp or candle as, as if nothing remains this is nirvana that is the goal now you can call it by any name and other traditions will say something else but it does not matter now sitting here this looks like total stupidity what do you mean dissolution I don't want to be dissolved I don't want that I want a life I want a good life I want ordinary life why are you pushing me to get rid of all these things so it is not going to make sense. And that, that means you will need to do the journey to the dissolution. And for a gani, it's very easy. You turn 180 degree and the dissolution is here, right here, right now. It is a matter of realizing. Because if you, if you go forward, wherever you are facing, towards dissolution, then you will encounter a very big paradox for which I don't have an answer actually. That the mind cannot be stopped. So what if this individual dissolves? Then what? Will the cycles of creation and destruction, will they stop? What about other minds? And so many things are there which do not make any sense. And the gurus will tell you something, some circular logic, you know. This is how it is and so what? You need to still pursue 
mukti nirvan it is not satisfactory for a gani this is not this is not a big problem there is nothing to be dissolved there is this realization that uh, i am already free i am already liberated you need to just turn this way and see <laughs> there is no bondage there it's already emptiness you know there is no light there is no candle there is nothing like this so that's why it is called uh, path of no effort direct path now this cannot be intellectual because just like i said if you repeat this thing it's not going to happen nothing is going to happen no nirvan no liberation no bondage nothing not intellectual intellectual thing so the first step is to realize uh, who am i you see what is my nature what is my essence in the self realization will uh, open up this this kind of liberation that i'm talking about self realization is nirvana itself nothing more to be done even if you don't realize the oneness is perfectly okay because is there a oneness the oneness can be defined only if you see the twoness only if you see the multiplicity once you see the emptiness nothing needs to be realized that's why there is more uh, Uh, stress on self realization rather than uh, realization of oneness and uh, traditions like zen will make you do the do two things in one step no self realization there <laughs> directly no self realization realization of no self and what remains one, oneness remains because as soon as there is self there is subject there is object when i say no subject well it's like already solved the problem is solved now when you see that it is emptiness the oneness is emptiness and uh, what else can be the oneness so uh, what do you need to know after that you don't even need to explain these things oneness is infinite oneness is like space oneness is like love it's it's all bs isn't it it's like nothing these things do not come close there are some words that may come close like it is perfection it is beautiful it is blissful these come close but we know it's not really applicable there some people have this delusion that i'll get a very very grand experience of oneness some day in future <laughs> it may happen in future who knows but it it's not going to be grand experience this experience is experience of oneness it will be as ordinary as this one probably less ordinary because now you don't have that fairy taleish expectation of oneness it will be very ordinary what do you do after that oh just clean the house cook the food so on watch the tv <laughs> it is this ordinary oneness there is nothing spiritual about self realization and oneness so either you can call everything is ordinary you can call everything as spiritual now it is the preference in the mind because that's why i say everything is spiritual because i don't want everybody to get demotivated because there are still preferences left in the mind so take the positive one instead of saying everything is meaningless ordinary purposeless fake life now nobody is going to <laughs> listen to me nobody is going to make any efforts nothing so what we do we sugar coat it a little bit look this life is spiritual life so once you see it it does not really make any difference there's no difference between spiritual and ordinary if you are looking for something special then i can guarantee you you will be disappointed the pleasure is spiritual the pain is spiritual the knowledge is spiritual the ignorance is spiritual all this experience that we are going through is spiritual and the liberation from it is also spiritual so is is a point of view only it's, in reality it's not spiritual and it is also spiritual both which is same as saying it's not both so now it becomes mysterious now it sounds proper spiritual 